Hey yeah, folks, this is Shantron here, and welcome to my corner of the internet. Today we are going to be taking a look at the Defending the Grove fight. This is for the Untouchable Challenge. I'm playing solo, except for some camp buffs, and I'm not allowed to take any real points of damage. Temporary hit points do not count. The build I'm using, or a variant of it, is up on my channel, and I'll link it in the description. Okay, so here we go. The first thing you notice is probably that I'm very low health. This is self-inflicted from the Ritual Dagger just to proc Leviathan's Blessing and give me plus two to attack for the first part of the fight. I am currently setting up a station for my mage hand, putting down some bombs and void bolts and stuff. There's also some javelins lying there, so he has some stuff to throw at. Or she, I guess. I don't mind using consumables for a fight like this, because this is uh, quite a hard one of the, the early ones. There's a lot of enemies, so we need to be able to deal some amount of AoE damage. Basically ready to start here, doing the usual stuff. For this fight, I would like to be able to keep all of the tieflings alive. That's a stretch goal, if you want to call it. Obviously, I can't take damage. And I would really prefer for Minthara to be knocked down instead of killed at the end of this combat, which is a little hard for a ranged build to do, but we should be able to manage. So we're going to do some stuff for that. I start by dipping here because I don't want to do the healing trick right away because I want to stay low health as much as possible. And then we go for the rally there. That's an unfortunate effect for the rallying thing. It's gonna stop me from regaining hit points, temporary hit points, I mean, by killing people, which is what I usually do. So I should not be taking too much damage for the first uh, five rounds of this combat. I skipped past the cinematic, or most of it at least. And what that did was that it left the spider and the ochre uh, quite far back, so they have to run to the fight first. And then I opened with shovel in order to get surprise and everything. And the surprise is very, very relevant, obviously. It gives me a lot more actions to work with. And as usual, I've forgotten to bring the mage hand into the combat, so it's gonna wear out too early. But we're just gonna have to live with that. At least we get the first couple of rounds. Now it's actually in the combat with us. That's great. Let's find a speed potion somewhere and put it to good use. We acted before Sevlar, which means that he's gonna get the speed potion as well. That's not too relevant, but it's quite nice. And now we're ready to go. So the first thing we want to do is, since we want to be protecting Zevlor and he's going to jump down there in a second, we want to be killing this lot of goblins that would be able to rush him right away. I check out the size of the Void Bolt just to see how many I can pull in, and then I'm going to try and fight my cl find my Cloud of Daggers scroll here in a second. The Cloud of Daggers and Void Bolt combination is quite well known, and it works re really well. I place the Cloud of Daggers here, so you can see I get three of the bowels and a couple of the goblins. The goblins that spawn from the bowels might not be surprised. You can see here there's one uh, in the top there that's not surprised at the moment. That also means that we want to kill these guys first. The white bulb here should pull them, if not into the Cloud of Daggers, and at least close enough that they will all be in range of a bomb. I find a low hit point target here, that's a Goblin Warrior. And I shoot him with the bonus action to proc my Bloodlust Potion and get an extra action that I can use to throw a bomb. If I hadn't been able to view that, I would have needed to wait for the Mage Hand, which means that some of them, the ones in the battles, would have acted beforehand. So it's it's quite nice to, to get the kill there. This bomb should be able to more or less take out all of these, and as long as it takes out the Sabah, which was unfortunately not one of those pulled into the Cloud of Daggers, it will take out the rest, basically. But we wiped out all of them with one fell swoop there. That was awesome. And then we just need to find a good position to end our turn. Doesn't matter too much since now, at this point, everyone that's left are surprised. So we are going to get our next turn before really they get to do a lot. And here we have Sevlor jumping down to attack the goblin hiding behind the spider. It's fine. Shovel moves closer to the Cloud of Daggers so he can bait for next turn. All of the surprises coming in here. Mage Hand gets to act. And more bombs. There are two more groups of goblins. I'm basically just lobbing a bomb into each of them. I just need to set it up so that I can actually reach them. And the Mage Hand should be able to do that if he gets all the way out of the... On the ledge. If we kill the Sabah, he's gonna blow up the rest of them. Which we want, but we can't really control it. So, one bomb over there. And it's gonna do the double, double damage thing. I found out that it's not at all related to, uh, at least not only related to the Halo of Spores going, going triggering it doubly. So if I want to use bombs at all, I'm just going to have to live with it. So these bombs just deal damage, double damage a lot of the time. That's just how it is. I'm fine with that. 
It's just gonna make the combats a little easier, but at least it's not really cheating if that's the only way you can use them. So Mage Hand did a thing. It uh, didn't wipe out any of the groups entirely, but it got close. And for some reason, I think the that Spider acted the first turn, and that's why it got the surprise uh, this turn. I don't know exactly how it works, but it skipped its turn this time, but it took it before me last turn, so that's probably why it's a little wonky. I'm trying to find a good target for Thinthar here. And I think if we move close enough, we should be able to shoot both the Goblin down by Zevlor and the Spider. If I can kill the Goblin first, it just gives me an extra action for um, to, to kill the Spider. And we want to be protecting. Uh, we want to be protecting Zevlor, of course. Put down a healing potion. Do the Halo Bless trick to get Bless effect. Doesn't do that much for us here, but it's quite nice against the Spider. Also, we don't get high um, high enough to uh, to for the Leviathan's blessing to fall off just yet. So it just means we have better chance to hit the Spider. I was considering using a special arrow there, but we should be able to do enough damage without it, so there we go. Three shots at 90% is quite quite decent, and no more spider. I'm running around in circles here because I'm considering my my best position, it doesn't matter too much. I, the, the ones that would be able to shoot me from down there are dead. And we see here a very nice shot, critical hit on the sapper, made him blow up and blow up the, the hobgoblin, and then the other guy shot the hobgoblin as well. So now that group is handled. Shovel gets close to the Cloud of Daggers, goes into invisibility. This is to lure either the spider or whomever gets to act next. Minthara usually doesn't go for it. Um, as in, she rarely goes to, to check for these. Uh, I think maybe their AI is scripted differently or something. I don't know how it works. The Sapper, on the other hand, is happy just running for the bridge. They kind of ignore the fact that there's a Cloud of Daggers there at all and just run. If they were going to go there, they're just going to go into it as if it was invisible to them. I don't know how it how it works or why it works like that, but sort of how it is. Back to the mage hand. No more bomb lobbing for us. We also already dealt with most of the the critters, but there's a big fat ogre that we can we can throw um, throw at. There's a decent chance to hit it because its armor class is quite soggy. So if we can just get the spears out there in a position where we can actually reach the ogre, which I do believe we can. 65% chance is okay, and even if we miss, he might still take some fall damage from it. You can see there, um, 9 points of damage from the first javelin spear, or whatever you want to call them. I think these are the magical spears I've picked up at this point, like Jacket Edge and uh, um, Vision of the Absolute and stuff like that. So, one turn of the Mage Hand for 20 points of damage from an Ogre, I'll, I'll count that as okay. It's not as good as the bombs, obviously, but hey, what is? Spider turn. Spider goes to look for Shovel. So the bait worked and we got 12 free points of damage there. That's awesome. And then he's after Zevlor, who's held, who's held. And we do not want the Spider to be attacking Zevlor while he's held. So let's see if we can blast it down. There's a Goblin standing there as well. He's a little hard to see, but he's very low health. And the fire from this arrow sh might be able to, to blow him up. And you can see we, we get the double kill there, which is obviously great. More actions, but... It's not the best time for more actions because the ogre got knocked a bit too far away, so I can't shoot him. I could jump down and engage, but the speed potion is going to run out soon. So what I do instead is I drink an elixir of hill giant strength, and then I want to try my hand at throwing instead. I also need this hill giant strength potion for later because I want to be able to knock out Minthara. I grab the returning pipe from Shadowheart here, just to have it available. It's also supposed to go into my main hand for for that later attack I'm talking about anyways, and getting a throw in with it at some point would be nice. But they are too far away at this point. I run to the uh, other side of the, the map instead. The idea is that I will be close enough next turn to attack Manthara, or maybe even this turn from, from this position. That's what I try, but I'm still not close enough, so it uh, it uh, didn't really matter. I think it, it might have been wrong going over there, because they are going to run for Sevlor, and I want to be able to, to stand there and, and protect them. Also do a quite horrible play here, that I, I place down the Grease. I figure that it might be able to reach the Ogre, and it could knock him down, buying me some extra time on him. But it doesn't reach him, and it's just going to make him go around it and set, probably making him not go into the Cloud of Daggers. Minthara also cannot get knocked prone, so it doesn't even work against her, so there's nothing in it. I place down a healing potion here. The idea is that I'm going to break it. It's going to leave a puddle and the guy, this guy, uh, whatever, Asherak, I think his name is, is going to run through it, but he didn't. He missed it. I wanted to bless him to get a little bit of extra bonus to attack. 
Zevlo is still the health person down there, whatever that's called. Shovel goes for yet another bait. See if we can lure the ogre or someone else at this point. Maybe Minthara even. That's not too likely. Yeah, I think she just threw from up there. It's a little weird. The ogre misses both the, the grease and the cloud of daggers. So not all awesome. And there we have the speed potion wearing off and them getting an extra turn. Zevlor is not in a good position here with an ogre left uh, next to him. And also his turn got skipped as well, I think, because of the speed potion. I tried to use the scare from the, from Shovel there, but it doesn't work on the ogre. Oh, well, he just made a save. And then back into a position where I can bait next turn. He might even go for the for Shovel here or one of them might to, to kill him. As you can see, Shovel has 17 hit points and he also has resistance to most physical damage. So he should be able to, to tank some damage. The ogre just decided to throw at Zevlo instead of going to melee him, which is obviously awesome for us. I think maybe it can't reach him in the position he's held in. Good. At this point, I will be able to hit far enough with my throw. This was what I wanted to happen before. The fact that I, it, it gives me a little extra reach with throwing. I consider running through the potion of healing, but it doesn't do anything for me. I already have 95% chance to hit, and the dip effect does not work on the throwing weapon anyways. A lot of damage from one throw there. Unfortunately, some of the falling damage was on a corpse, so only 20, but still nice. And then I can jump down there and try to save poor Sevlon. I'm considering jumping up there, but that would not work. I need to go down and save Sevlon, and that's also what I'm going to end up doing. So I should have a potion of greater healing. And if I place that one next to Zevlon, the halo should be able to break it. And we have a, health, a healed Zevlon. He also gets the bless effect to help with his apparently horrendous saving throws against the whole person. So maybe we get a Zevlor back soon, or at least uh, he won't start there getting auto critted by every attack that strikes him. The ogre threw at him before instead of going to melee him, so it's probably gonna do the same again once it gets its turn. For now, I consider trying to see if I can go and kill the goblin and give it this advantage, but I wouldn't be able to anyway, so it'll just run away. So it uh, doesn't matter, and I can't deal enough damage. And Minthara, it's, uh, it's just too scary. So we bait again. With shovel and this time Minthera decides to go down and i think she's looking for him there that uh what tiresome tricks is this and she doesn't remove the stealth cursor for some reason she she didn't seem to take the action maybe because she's a player character and can't i don't know how it works and the ogre also doesn't get close enough to do it but you can see after he threw he, he ran over there and here we go at this point i should just shoot the ogre really I don't have the dipped effect on my uh, crossbow at this point. And I think that's why I start by considering throwing. But I, I want to use the bonus action shot anyways. So um, we do need to, to heal a bit here. And the plus one d4 is technically better than the plus two. So let's just get the bless effect right. You may notice that Sevlo has finally broken out of his hold person. So maybe we do get a bit of paladin help in this fight after all. I still throw here for some reason. I should have just shot. That made no sense. But it doesn't matter since we killed the ogre anyway. And let's just stay up here. It's, it's quite a safe position. These guys finally get to do a little bit of shooting. And missing. Yep, that's awesome. And Minthara uh, should probably run for Shovel if we, uh, if we try and bait with him here. Just click off the invisibility, click it back on, get away. That's basically his job in this fight, right? And then to provide surprise, which is pretty freaking awesome part of it. Okay, so through the Cloud of Daggers, take a little bit of damage. That's fine. And he doesn't get to do a lot more because she blessed as well. Triple concentration success there. <laughs> it doesn't matter too much. And then I think I, I make a bad play here. I should have shot her with my bonus action first. And that would have meant that I could go down and try and knock her out afterwards with my melee attack. If I dealt enough damage. I go for special arrow instead, thinking that that will get her lower so that I can uh, do the melee attack. But obviously I cannot do the melee attack with a bonus action. So now I'm just stuck not being able to do anything. And she's very low on health at this point. I think she's a, at 10 or something like that. So I'm considering how on earth I try to save her, at least give her the best chance to survive that I can provide. And I end up finding out that maybe if I make her invisible, that could be a thing. So let's find an invisibility potion. There we go. I do have a single one and I don't tend to use them on myself because I, I don't want to do the stealth um, 
exploit, whatever you want to call it, stuff, just uh, getting away from combat. You can almost always turn invisible to, to get some safe space and it can make the fights uh, less, a little less challenging. So, invis her by putting the invis potion next to her and breaking it. Boom. And Zephyr still gets to act after her, so we are not home safe. But these three at least do not have her as a target, which is great. That means they can't accidentally uh, kill her by rolling a 20 or whatever. Shovel doesn't really get to do anything. I could probably have moved him up towards those. She takes damage from being a fire. I, I think I forgot that. So it also breaks her invisibility. He hits Sevlo a bit. He's not really in danger of dying at this point. And he misses her. So that's awesome. I'm still a little confused about what exactly to do because I don't use the knockout mechanic that much. So I was worried whether or not the poison effect and the necrotic effect would actually maybe kill her. I don't know whether those get turned into uh, non-lethal damage or whatever you want to call it as well. So I'm considering just going for going for an unarmed attack, but I don't think I would be able to deal 7 points of damage. I think it's 1 plus your strength, so it would be 6 instead, which is not enough. But this weapon is uh, a minimum of 7 points of damage from the real damage, so maybe my reasoning at this point is that no matter what, I should kill her with the weapon damage, and then maybe the poison and the credit won't trigger. Or maybe it triggers and it doesn't matter, it's, it's hard to say. 80% chance of hitting at least, and it should knock her out, is my thinking. And it does, so... That was a little uh, that was a little scary. I got a little worried here towards the end that Mentharo was gonna die, but other than that, the fight went fine. So that's it for the Grove Defense. If you are interested in any more of the harder-ish fights from the upper part of Act One, you should be able to check those out. They uh, are up on my channel and linked in the description. The next thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna go and take a real rest and actually get our spell slots back this time, and then I'm gonna head into the Underdark and look for some hard fights down there that we can showcase. For now. Thank you for joining. If you have been, I've been Shanton, and you've most definitely been awesome. Don't forget to do the YouTube stuff, and bye-bye.